So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This came in as a request directly to Yarnspirations through social media and then was passed along with me and it is the Crochet Texture Sampler Blanket. I really like samplers. I like how you can learn some stitches and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So designed by Julia using Bernat Blanket Sparkle. So when you see the yarn it does actually sparkle and when it sparkles it's not like a crazy sparkle. You may see it, you may not too uh, but the filament is exceptionally soft and unless I told you it was there and uh, you may not even realize it's there but you'll see that the, the yarn will have those flecks of glitter uh, when it hits your eyes. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm gonna teach you how to do this pattern. We're gonna do it from start to finish but my blanket will be just a summation and we're gonna go through the instructions and I'm gonna take you through a bit of a detail um, walk through right in the very beginning. So if that's something that you wanna avoid you can just uh, fast forward in the chapters. So as we begin this I'm going to have a swatch sample and the swatch is gonna take me through all of the layers that we would like to do and there's a repeating that is involved with some of them and the key factor on this one here is that there, sometimes there's 80 stitches across and then sometimes there's 79. So you'll notice in here I went ahead and I looked at it in advance. So this particular section has 80 half double crochets, this one has 79. So we're going to have to adjust when we get to those particular layers to make sure that we are staying on track. Now this pattern that I'm looking at here is being revised currently and so you'll see a different version that will be slightly altered. Diagram one on this version has been eliminated out and it has been replaced with a new diagram. So thanks to Julia for doing that for us. So this one here I have not figured out how to change the size in this one because the, it is a stitch sampler. So I'm just gonna stay, state this is what it is. So Bernat bl a Blanket Yarn is what it is is <laughs> Bernat Blanket bar, uh, Yarn is what it's called for. It's an eight millimeter size L crochet hook and you're going to start off with chaining it of 82 and again I'm just gonna make a swatch. So as we begin we're going to start off with the very base of the, the blanket and work our way up and I'll just be following the instructions and then pulling you back to the instructions whenever we need to do that. So for now we're going to start off and we're gonna do the puff sec uh, stitch section as number one first and let's just go through that next. So this is the puff stitch section number one and what we have here is that when we go to do chaining of two when we skipped it does not count as a stitch. So you're just gonna be noticing that in the instructions. So we have a diagram that's available to you. That's the one that's been replaced and that's what it's going to look like here. So you'll just do your chain, your half double crochet, your third chain from the hook and then just go all the way back and then we have to work on this to get ourselves all the way. So section number one here is actually really quite simple. It's only five rows and then we're gonna move on to the waffle stitch section which is section number two. So as we get started today you're gonna start off with a slip knot. This is called Planetary Purple Spa. That's the name of this Bernat Blanket uh, Baby Blanket Sparkle. So I need you to chain 82. So just chain as you normally do. So one, two, three, four, and five and go all the way to 82 and again I'm only gonna do a little piece of it. So go to 82, meet me back here in just a moment. So let's begin our first row. We're going to go third chain from the hook and what I recommend for Bernat Blanket is that never go into the back hump of a chain because it'll open up and it will be very very big. So what I'm recommending to you is just count back to the third. So one, two and three and when you go to do that just make sure that there's two loops that are on top and you're going to half double crochet in that one. So that there's only one uh, bottom strand. So it's opposite to what I would normally teach but I know this particular yarn very well. So then you're gonna go to the next chain and you're just gonna have double crochet yourself all the way across and I'll be back in just a moment and this is row number one of section number one. So I've gone all the way across, pretend it's the whole distance. As I said I'm doing a small swatch. Grab a spare piece of yarn at this time and just go in behind some stitch work on the row and I want you just to attach it You'll remove this later but every time you see this falling out this is the right side of the work. So in the back you won't see it so that's the wrong side. So we will be going back and forth and you will see references to the wrong side, right side at times and this will always indicate where you are. Let's move on to row number two. So turning a work and going to row number two. We're going to work on the on the horizontal bars in front of the work and so the horizontal bars are not the actual stitch itself but it's the bar 
directly underneath it. So here's your normal stitch and it's right here. So let's just start off and you're going to chain two. That will not count as a stitch and you're going to go to your first bar. It's right here. Okay, so there's the stitch normal. It's right here and you're going to half double crochet yourself on that bar. And this is gonna create what appears to be a knitting look on the front side of the work. So let's just do that. So starting in the next one, i sorry I just had to turn off the video for a second and then you're just going to half double crochet in the next horizontal bar. Once you can see where it is, it becomes really easy. So you're just leaving the top normal stitch alone and just continue to work on the front horizontal bar. So let's see what it looks like on the back. See, it's creating this beautiful line which is part of your texture. So please just go all the way across on the horizontal bar and half double crochet and meet me back here in just a moment. This is row number two of section number one. So I'm coming all the way to the end. How many stitches are left? If the chain two doesn't count, that's not a stitch. So your last one is on the back bar, or sorry, on the front bar on this last one right here. Like that. So ignore that chain two. So it just pop out a little bit but we are doing a border and when you turn it around you'll see this is now the front side of the work, the right side because you can now see texture. We're now going to move on to row number three and row number three is another fun round or another fun row. Let's begin. So in row number three we're going to chain two does not count as a stitch and you'll have to crochet the first two. You're going to skip one only and do a puff stitch and then you are going to then chain two puff stitch in the same one and then skip one, two, three and then puff, chain two, puff, skip one, two, three and you'll do this all the way to the end. When you get close to the end then, very close, you're going to skip the final two. So one and two and then just go into the last um, two as half double crochets. Let's begin row number three. Okay, let's begin row number three. Chain two does not count as a stitch and in the first one here and the second you'll put in a half double crochet each. So one and two and then as we start then we're going to skip the first one and we're going to do a puff into the second one away. To do that you're gonna wrap the hook and going in and then pull through and then you'll do that again. So wrap the hook and in, pull through and then do it one more time in, pull through like that. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops. You're going to yarn over, pull through all seven loops and that's your puff stitch. Chain two to, and then do that again. So in the same one, wrap and in, pull through, wrap and in, pull through and wrap and in, pull through and then pull through all seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't need to count it if, you're con if you confirm that you did it three times. So just pull through everything. Now as you're moving across now you're going to skip three. So one, two, three and then the fourth one away you're going to puff again. So puff. So once, twice and three times a lady <laughs> and then pull through everything and then chain two and do that again in the same stitch. So the only difference is, is how you're ending a row. Okay, and then skip one, two, three, go to the fourth and do it again. Please do this all the way across. I'll see you close to the other side. So I just wanna let you know that I don't know if this width will work for me. So I may end a little bit earlier just in case the stitch count isn't gonna work. So I'm just guessing on the size because I cannot figure out how to change the size on this. And that's fine. It's great the way it is. So I'm coming close to the other side and by golly you would think that I planned it but the swatch actually works going across. <laughs> so that's awesome. So once you get close to the end you're going to skip the next two. So one and two and then the last two stitches here will each be a half double crochet. So I just literally guessed the, the width. So if you're thinking okay well you figured it out. No I didn't. <laughs> so that was row number three. Let's move on to row number four. So let's turn our work and do row number four. So row number four we're just going to chain up two doesn't count as a stitch and you are going to apply one half double crochet in each of the stitches. Okay, so we have the half double crochets, the two that are starting off. So one and two 
and then each one of the puff stitches will have a stitch. So you got one there and then where you have to have the balance here is that in the chain two space here put in two half double crochets. So there's one half double crochet in each of the stitches plus then two into the chain two spaces and I will need you to do that all the way across and then maybe back here in just a moment and this is row number four. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of number four remember that that chain two does not count as a stitch so make sure that you do not add that as a stitch so it keeps it nice and awesome. So let's begin now and turn our work and let's begin row number five which is the last part of section number one. Let's begin number five. Now last time we did this we were on the back and we did the front bar. Now this time it is a stitch sampler so now we're gonna work on the back bar of this so it will pull forward. So chain two for me and so follow this around. So here is the top stitch right here one and two and it's the third one back. It's the third strand and once you get it you'll get you'll see the rest of them. Okay so the regular stitch is here and it was the third bar in behind. So then here's the regular stitch and the one is right there and I need you to half double crochet on the back bar going all the way across. So coming all the way across you can see that this is the layer here. It looks similar to the, it never always looks exactly identical but that's the neat thing about this uh, particular concept is that it's fun and fabulous. So now what I need you to do is turn your work and we're going to begin then we're gonna do the waffle section next and in the waffle section we have to change the stitch counts. So let's bring on that next. So section number two is next. So moving along in our pattern we're moving to the waffle section and in the first setup row we need to eliminate one stitch. So it states there chain three and one double crochet in the next 39 and then do a double crochet two together and then one double crochet in each to the end of the row. The goal ultimately is to eliminate one stitch. So you don't wanna eliminate it on the ends because it'll indent the one edge but if you do it near the middle like it's suggesting then it'll stay pretty much in balance. So what we're going to do is begin that. There is a diagram and by the time you see it it will be updated as well and so we have the setup row number one right here and then we have the row number one and then two. So it's gonna be um, going through one and two until a certain dimension. So let's begin the setup row number one for the waffle section. So let's begin the setup row. You're going to chain three and then you're going to double crochet in the next 39 stitches. So just start counting that out and then after that you'll do a two together double crochet and I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. So I'm just gonna go about halfway on my swatch here and then I'll show you how to do that stitch in a moment. When you're ready to do the double crochet two together you're gonna make two stitches into one. To do that you're gonna yarn over and going into the stitch next one and then pull through, pull through two and hold and then do the next one. So yarn over next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold. Now you're gonna pull through all three loops and that was the two together double crochet. And then once you have that done you just zip your way and just double crochet yourself all the way to the other edge and I'll be back in just a moment and we'll begin rows number one and two which is part of the repeat for this section. So I'm coming to the end of the line and make sure that you don't go into that chain two which is part of that first stitch that is not included as a stitch. Okay, so you're gonna go into the very last half double crochet here but ignore that chain two. And then turn your work and let's begin then row number one. In row number one we're going to always have the, uh, the edge here and the other edge to be just a double crochet. So in this case it'll be a chain three that counts as a double crochet. And then you're gonna immediately come down to this one right here and that's gonna be a front post double crochet we're now making the waffle stitch. So the next three in a row will each be a back post double crochet. So wrap and come from the back. This is an intermediate level pattern. So there are videos on specifically sti uh, stitch instructions if you need that help. Just enter the name of the stitch in YouTube and you can find stuff like that really easily. Now that's the back post double crochet and now the next one is a front post double crochet. So everything is kind of working in groups of four once you understand that. So the next three are back post double crochet. So we have one, two and three and then we have 
then the next one is a front post double crochet. So please do that all the way to the end. The second last stitch will be a front post double crochet if you got your counts done right and I'll be there in just a moment. So I'm coming to the second last one. I'm just keeping my counts. There's your front post double crochet and in the turning chain you're going to double crochet and this is row number one. So rows number one and two are the repeat for this and uh, when we turn we'll be on row number two which is looking at the back of the afghan. So we're going to be doing that next and so there are two rows. So let's begin row number two. So in row number two we have to maintain the edging for the waffle but we have to just maintain the flatness of the back of this. So we're going to maintain and by chaining three and the first stitch here is going to be a back post double crochet. that maintains the ridge on the front side. The next three that you can see here, those are double crochet. So just one in each. So you can literally follow the pattern with what it's telling you to do by looking at the stitch work. So you can see this one is indented in. So that's a front post double crochet from before. So this time it's a back post double crochet to keep the ridging on the other side. Okay, so just maintain that all the way across and I'll see you at the end of the row in just a moment. So you'll be coming all the way across. The second last one is a back post double crochet to keep that ridge and then you'll just double crochet into the turning chain. And then you'll turn and you're back on the front side and now you can see the waffle is happening. So you're going to repeat then rows number one and two until the entire section measures 12 inches. So you're going to want to finish off on row number two. Okay, so when we go to start then the next uh, section will be on the right side which is the side that's facing up. So please do now rows number one and two until the um, whole section measures 12 inches and that's where I'll pick you up next and I'll do that right now. I'm now finished the waffle section. I've done my 12 inches. I'm finishing on the wrong side. So when you finish the last row you should be on the back side. So when you're ready to move on to zigzag bobble section which is the next one up you should be starting and on the right side. So we can obviously tell that by the stitch marker that we left but now that the stitch work is becoming obvious and where the texture is it becomes a lot easier. So let's move it along now to the zigzag bobble section number one which is the next up. So the next section is going to have a start up and we are going to do um, some fun stuff. We're gonna start with uh, chain two and a half double crochet in each of the rows. We're starting on the right side of the work and that's the good side facing up and then we're gonna commence through here. So this whole section is exactly what you see for the whole thing and so it only appears one time. So you just have to do all of these nine rows next and we'll be doing this after we get beyond the middle part. So we'll be back doing this later. So let's begin. We're gonna start up with the first row and let's begin that journey next. And just to bring you back to the pattern we are now here. So the zigzag bobble section number one we're doing it for the very first time. That's all the written instructions and so we'll have to pay attention next time when we do the diagonal spike stitch which is the next section for now because then we have to change the stitch counts from what we're still working with now. So let's begin the first row zigzag bobble section one. So as I mentioned to you several times I'm just doing a swatch so I don't know if I'm actually gonna hit the end of this but we'll fake it or make it right. So that's the rules. So we're going to begin and if you're doing the same size of the pattern it should work out for you anyway. So you're gonna chain two and that doesn't count as a stitch and you're going to half double crochet in each of your stitches all the way across. So I'll meet you back here in a moment. This is row number one. So the very last one is the turning chain. Make sure you half double crochet into the turning chain and not the space. Turn your work and let's begin row number two. Row number two is going to be that horizontal bars that we're gonna work with again and we're favoring the bars on the on this side of the work, the, the wrong side. So you're going to chain a total of uh, two. So one and two and half double crochet starting in the very first one on the horizontal bar. We've already done this before and that's gonna create that texture line on the front. So once you get the first one, so if you just still didn't get it the first time, remember there's two stitches or two uh, loops that make a stitch but it's this one right here. That's where you're going to play and that will cause the front of the work to fold over which creates the texture. So please just half double crochet on the front uh, horizontal bar all the way across and I'll see you at the end of the row. So getting all the way across I am just doing the last horizontal bar. You're going to skip the chain two that started the row because that didn't count as a stitch. Okay, 
sorry I got a little bit of shakes today, don't know why. So we're gonna turn our work and do row number three where we're gonna introduce the bobbles next. So we're going to do row number three which will consist of single crochets and I'm gonna get as far as I can to continue the repeat of the pattern but if you're following exactly with the stitch counts you should be good. So we're going to do single crochets which is gonna cause the bobble to squat down. Now what I don't want you to get confused, it's, it's a bobble, it's not a popcorn so it's a little bit easier. Well a lot easier to my point of view. So you're just gonna chain up one and this is the sequence to take yourself all the way across. You'll single crochet the first three in a row. And then the next one is a bobble. To do the bobble, right in the stitch itself, yarn over and going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. And what I need you to do then is then do that two more times. So the bobbles are consisting of doing that three times. And so you'll have four loops on your hook when you're done. And what you wanna do is when you do the bobble, use your finger and push it out towards you and you're going to yarn over everything and when you go to do the next row, squat it down in front of you so that it naturally wants to fold out to the front side and start in the next stitch. So in the this next seven in a row are single crochet. So squat it down, make sure it's tight, tight, tight so it stays on the front side and then that's one of seven and you're gonna do this all the way across. So this is two, three, four, five, six and seven and then you'll introduce another bobble. To do that then you're going to then um, going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. Do that a total of three times. Okay, use your finger, push towards you, force it to squat and then do the next seven. So I need you to do this all the way across and if you're keeping in sequence after the last bobble is in there will only be three stitches left. And I want you to do that all the way across and I'll see you at the end of the row in just a moment. So remember that there's seven single crochets that separate the bobbles except for on the edges. Now for myself I can't get all the way across based on my swatch. So this is my last bobble going in and just ignore the rest that's hidden behind my hand. Once you get your last bobble in, make sure that you do push it to the good side and then do it. So you'll have one, two and three. So your bobbles then will go in there and in your full example it will go all the way across. So you'll have three on one side here on the edge, three on the other and then seven that separate those. So let's turn to work and begin row number four. Let's begin number four. Chain up one and you're going to apply one single crochet in each. Make sure that you do not add any extra stitches when you do the bobble. The bobble is only one stitch. So if you do the bobble, this is the bobble and if you have to just count and make sure that there's seven before you do the next bobble and etc. So that, that might be helpful for you if you're not as experienced at recognizing the stitches. Please do row number four and we'll be doing row number four again in the future. But for now, just single crochet. I'll see you at the end of the row. So coming to the end of the row, single crochet right to the end and then turn your work and then we're gonna be back on the right side of the work. So now we're going to apply more bobbles, uh, even more on this next row as we proceed to row number five. So beginning number five, you're going to chain up one and there's gonna be one single crochet in the edge. So there's gonna be one single crochet by itself and then on the other side when you get all the way over there, there'll be one on its own. The next one is then a bobble. So you're just going to do what you already know. So it's doing that yarning over three times and pulling through and then pull through all four, squat it down and so there's only gonna be three stitches in between the bobbles. So we have one, two and three and then you're back to the bobble again. So just do another bobble and you'll do that all the way across. Sorry, that was a puff stitch I was just doing. I know. So there we go. So we're adding our bobble. I don't even like puff stitches. <laughs> That's what's kind of funny about it. So uh, you got your puff and then you squat it, force it out. So one, two and three and then bobble and then etc. And if you, your stitch counts are right, your last bobble will be the second stitch from the end and then just one single in the end. Please do that all the way across. This is row number five. So I'm getting all the way across. So the second last stitch if you're keeping the counts. 
will be the bobble as they promised. And then finally just tight, tight, tight last single crochet pop it out and single crochet on that one. Let's turn and work and let's continue to row number six. Row number six it's the same as what we already know so just chain up one and apply one single crochet in each of the stitches in between or uh, sorry each of the stitches in, uh, on the row and continue all the way across. So this is row number six with the straight single crochet across. I'll be right back in just a moment. Coming right to the end of the row turn your work and let's begin row number seven and again the bobbles are going to change location one more time. So let's do number seven next. Let's begin number seven. So number seven you're going to start up you're on the right side of the work chain up one and do one single crochet in the first seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now the next one's the bobble. Oh my god, you know what I just noticed? <laughs> I had no idea. We're actually doing an up and down zigzag. That's why it's called the zigzag bobble. <laughs> okay, so ooh, calm down. Okay, so this is where the bobble is. Oh, that's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> I had no idea. I didn't know why it was called the zigzag. So pull it through and then you're just gonna drop it down into the next and I bet we're doing the next seven, right? So let me just take a quick glance over. Yes, it's seven. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And look at that. It's going up and down in a zigzag. Ah, that's fun. Woohoo. I like learning new stuff like this. Okay. So you're gonna do that bobble and you're just gonna keep putting seven in between and eventually you'll come to the end like I'm about to. So I'm getting all excited. I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> losing my marble. So we have the last seven will be a single crochet if your counts are right by the time you get all the way across the line. So let's uh, do that and I'll be right back in a sec. We'll start off row number eight but I'm gonna have to admire these up and down zigzags. That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Okay, let's begin row number eight. So I've already turned the work. Chain up two does not count as a stitch. It's a uh, half double, it's a chain two. It doesn't count. So we're now just gonna half double crochet in each of the stitches just regularly all the way across and this is row number eight and we're almost done this section. Huh. Learn something every day. I'll be right back. So coming all the way to the end half double crochet, turn your work and we're back on the right side and we're about to do the final row of this section and we're gonna be back on the horizontal bars but this time focusing on the back side so we can create this line that we saw here. So let's do that next. Let's start row number nine. So we're going to play on the horizontal bar on the back side so we can create this line again on the front side. So last time when we did this we were on the back moving it forward. This time we gotta go on the back side. So the stitches, the two loops are the stitch and the third one is right in behind. So it's going on an angle down. So chain two. The first one's always tough to get into and just take your time. Sometimes turning it sideways to access it may be the best and I would probably do that if you weren't watching me too. And so you're just doing the back side with the half double crochet that way. Once you get the first one done then you just keep on moving down. I'm just turning it sideways so I can see it. See it's right there. So there's one and I'm gonna continue that all the way across. So I'll be back in just a moment. This is the final row for this section. So it's just about to cut away and I'm just gonna continue to leave the pattern on its side like this. I seem to be having trouble re reaching over the back side. So I'm just gonna keep working it down so that the project is kind of in line with me instead of the traditional way. I think that might be the best way to tackle that. I'll be back in a moment. So the end of the row is now complete and we're now going to move on in the pattern to the diagonal spike section next. So we're now at the end of the zigzag bobble section and we're gonna move on now to the diagonal spike section next and uh, we have this and you can see the up and down motion of the zigzag and let's uh, begin and turn our work to the wrong side and start but we have to go back to the pattern just really momentarily just to show you that there's a change in the stitch count. So as we start the diagonal spike section we have the setup row. It's asking us to add an additional stitch right in the middle of the afghan. So you know how we reduce down to get 
uh, one less we need to increase it back up to that one. So you're gonna single crochet in the first 39, two single crochets in the next and one single crochet in each to the end and that brings it from 79 to 80 stitches. So when we go to look at this pattern in the diagram is that we're trying to get it established and we're moving on this. This is really easy to be able to complete and this is the whole middle section that we're going to do. So we're currently here in the middle. Let's begin to do this section and this here is the diagonal spite section right in the center of your blanket. So let's begin the setup row. So you're just gonna chain up one and you'll single crochet in the first 39 stitches. So just single crochet across. Myself I'm just gonna add an extra stitch halfway through. So you're just gonna go all the way through. You'll count to 39 and then in the next one then you'll put two single crochets into the same stitch and then one single all the way to the end. Make sure that you have your stitch count of 80 before continuing on to row number one of the repeat of this pattern. So let's begin to do that next and I'll be right back in a second. And just to recap to put two single crochets in the same stitch just single crochet once and then twice into the same stitch and then carry on from there. So that adds that extra stitch that you need. Carry on. I'll be at the end of the row in a second. So I'm coming up all the way to the end and you turn your work and we're gonna be on the right side next and this is when we're gonna start the fun stuff of doing the overlays. So row number one is the repeat through the whole thing and we're going to continue. So once we get it established we're going to continue to repeat row number one until we have another 12 inches done. So let's begin row number one. As we move on to number one it's the same instruction whether you're reading it this way or on row number three going the other way. They just did that just for verification of what we're about to do. This whole stitch wraps around the additional stitches that are there. So this line here appears on the back side. So this is a stitch that's reversible. Let's begin to do this section next. So you'll start up and the first uh, chain three will be your double crochet and then the very next stitch will be another double crochet. So that's gonna be your edge. So when you get to the other side the last two is going to be your double crochets. You're now about to start doing the diagonal um, spike. So we're going to uh, double crochet the next three in a row. So just remember it's three. So we have one, two, and three. And when you do the diagonal spike what you want to do is wrap the hook and you wanna come into the same stitch as the first one of the three. So wrap and then going into the same stitch which causes this strand to wrap around the other posts and pull through. I would provide a little bit of slack. So just kind of like wiggle it a little bit and then double crochet as normal. And what this is doing it's giving the other three double crochets a hug like that. So that counts as this stitch right here. So you're gonna immediately skip this one and go this one. So you'll do the next three in a row. So we have one, two, and three. So then you'll do the next one but it will be in the first one of the grouping of three. So in, same stitch, provide a little bit of slack and then double crochet as you normal did. And that's what we're doing. So skipping the, this one because that's counted as this one and then do the next three. So one, two, and three. And come to the first one in, give it a hug, pull through and two. And that's neat eh? So I want you to do this all the way across and then the last two stitches will just be double crochets as normal. I'll see you there in just a moment. When you get all the way to the other side you've got your last one in here. So that counts as this one. So you only have two double crochets in a row. So adding that extra stitch put you back in balance. It did even for my little swatch here. So you're going to turn your work and repeat that row over and over and over until you get 12 inches done and you're going to end on the right side of the work which is the good side facing up. So let's review on how to do this row one more time. To do this row again this is repeating a row number one so you're gonna chain three. That's your first double and then double crochet in the next. So there's your edging. So you'll just use the uh, first three as double crochets. So one, two, and three. And do you see that that stitch that we created even in the back side it has the sideway or the diagonal look right? So once you get your, your three in you'll come back to the first one. Give it a hug. 
a little bit of slack and double crochet. That counts as this one. So you immediately start and you'll see that these will group together like a, a, a column. So you do the next three. So one, two, and three. Come to the first one of that group. Give it a hug. Pull through. And that counts as that one. So please do this all the way across and we'll talk at the end of this row because this is all you need to do for this whole section which is the middle of your blanket. So once you're all the way across you're skipping this one because that's concluded in there. So you have the two last. Okay so let's talk. We're going to repeat that row over and over and over until you have 12 inches done finishing on the, the right side. So when you get your 12 you should be on the front side with all the texture facing up and then we're gonna carry on. So that's what I need you to do. So please keep repeating until you can measure 12 inches and the 12 inches uh, the section. So the 12 inch section here would be right here. So this whole section will be 12 inches. So let's uh, continue and I'll see you back here in a few moments but I just got some homework to do in the meantime. So I now have my 12 inches done from when I started this section to where I am. I did have to change the color just because I ran out of this color. So now you're on the right side. You can tell if you look at the, the bobbles that are over here that's on the right side. So when we do the final row of the diagonal spike section we should be turning our work and doing the wrong side. So in the wrong side we have to do something just slightly different so that we can get ourselves reset back up to do the next section after this. So the last row that you need to do is called next row in, in that particular section of the pattern and what we have to do is that we have to decrease one stitch in order to bring ourselves back into balance so that we can do the zigzag bobble section number two and it's the same instruction as number one. It's just the twice that it appears. So what we're going to do is that you're just gonna chain one and you'll single crochet in the first 39 stitches so you'll go all the way to 39 and then you'll put two stitches together. So in my case uh, just Put me on pause now and meet me at the when you finish 39 and we'll continue that in just a second. For myself in this watch I'm just gonna go halfway across. Once you get your 39 in the next stitch is just going to be a two together. So just go into the next stitch, pick it up and go into the next stitch after that, pick it up and then pull through all three loops. And then just single crochet everything to the very end of the row. So please do that and this is going to be the end of the diagonal spike stitch section which is right here. So I'll be back in just a moment and we'll start up a new section the zigzag bobble section number two. So once you get the single crochets all the way in just turn your work and we're going to begin the next section and I'm gonna take you back to the instruction now. So here in the instruction we just finished this. So we got ourselves back to 79 stitches. So it says zigzag bobble section number two. Repeat the first and ninth row as given for the zigzag bobble section number one. So all you just have to do is look over here and it's that set of instruction and again it's the same road map that we used before. Okay so we're going to begin that section all over again and I will film it uh, fresh just so that you understand. Let's move along now to the first row of this next section. Okay first row of the zigzag bobble section number two. You're going to chain two that will not count as a stitch and you'll have double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit. We've already done this before. You're already starting to get to know your stitches and just go to the end of the row and I'll be right back and we'll start number two in a moment. So half double crocheting right to the end and now we're going to begin. So we're on the good side of the project, the right side. We're gonna turn our project now and go back to the wrong side and we're going to begin number two. So we're going to half double crochet on the horizontal bars. So you're going to chain two and the top of the, that's the top of the stitch. It's this bar right here. Okay and you'll half double crochet starting in the first one and using the front horizontal bar for the entire row across. So please do that and maybe and we'll start row number three in a moment. Go right to the very end of the row and I'll already be turned and ready for you for number three. So I'm at the end of row number two. I lied. I just wanna make sure that you are getting the horizontal bar of the last one and you were ignoring that chain two that's on the, that's still there. So just getting that last horizontal bar and then turn your work and let's do row number three where we're gonna reintroduce the bobbles back into play. Let's begin to do our bobble work. We're going to chain one and the first three will be single crochet. So we have one, two, and three. And then, so then you're just gonna wrap and 
pull through and pull through two and hold and wrap in, in, pull through, pull through two and hold and wrap and in, pull through two and hold. You'll have four loops. We've done that before. Pull through and now the next seven in a row will each be a single crochet and you're gonna repeat that across. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then you're going to then put a bobble into the next. So do that total three times. You've done this before. And then nice and tight in the next one and pop it forward. So use your finger, push it forward and then secure it tight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then bobble. So you're gonna repeat that across and then once you get to the end you'll be bobbling uh, the fourth last stitch. And that's just keeping an account so I'm not doing anything special. And then the last three are just single crochet. So one, two, and three. So please do this all the way across and I will see you back here in just a moment as we continue to row number four. So row number four we're just turning our work. You're chaining one and then you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way across. And I'll meet you back here in just a moment as we move to row number five. Okay number five we're gonna have lots of bobbles going on so we're just gonna start. I've already turned my work so I have chain one and you'll single crochet in the first one and then bobble immediately into the next one. Okay and then you're just gonna bobble or sorry single crochet just three in a row. So one, two, and three. I keep missing my stitches today is because my hand is not resting on the on the armrest. So the next one is a bobble. And then the next three are on their own single crochet. So please do this all the way across and when you get to the other side there's only gonna be one stitch after the last bobble and make sure you fill that in and this is row number five. Okay, once number five is done, just turn your work. You did have one single crochet after the last bobble as I talked about already. And now we're gonna turn our work and do number six. So it's just what we already know and it's just chain one and one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. So please do that and I'll meet you back here as we continue to row number seven next. Okay, let's begin number seven and we're just going to start up immediately and just chain up one and do one single crochet in the first seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then bobbles in the next and therefore you're gonna get that zigzag going on again, right? You know how I realized that last time? <laughs> I'm a crochet teacher, I'm not a rocket scientist. So we got our bobble and make sure that you do go nice and tight into the next one to make sure it pops out and stays out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then bobble and then seven uh, singles and then bobble and seven singles and then after the last bobble goes in there will be seven singles to take you to the end. So please do that. This is row number seven. Turning a row at the end of row number seven and we're going to go. This is all sitting on my lap at this point. So we're going to start and you're going to half double crochet. So chain two, that's not your first one, it doesn't count. And then you half double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across please. This is row number eight. We have one more row in this section before moving on to something new. And I'll be back in just a moment. And finally after the end of row number eight, turn your work and we're gonna be back on the right side of the work. And we're going to be doing the horizontal bars on the back side of the half double crochet. So chain two that does not count and just lean it forward 
and the first top is the regular stitch but you need to go in behind even more. So like I did show before kind of come in on an angle to get it. I actually used the whole um, off camera when I did it before and I think I told you is that I kept leaning it over to the side just to make sure that I can see it and just continue to do that. So please half double crochet on the horizontal bar on the back side and this will create the ridge on the good side of the work. Please do that all the way across and meet me back here in a moment as we move along in this to a new section. We're now finished with the zigzag bobble section number two. So we're gonna go back to the pattern now and we're going to move on to the wicker stitch section next. So technically in the pattern we just finished this here on page number two. So let's grab up page number three and in page number three we're now going to move on to the wicker stitch section and the instructions for the diagram are available on the final page right here. And so we're gonna be doing that next. So we're going to just start up and we have the right counts immediately. So we're gonna do this and then once we get that done we'll be going back to the puff stitch section and we're going to be doing that and then the final border. So we're getting close, right? So let's do the wicker stitch section next. So let's begin to do the wicker stitch section and this is setup row number one. So we're currently on the wrong side of the project. So when we ended we were just coming across. So I've just turned my work. We're on the wrong side. So that matters. We're going to then just chain up one and do one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. We've already done this before. So please single crochet yourself all the way across and be uh, back here in just a moment and we'll do row number one. So I'm at the end of setup row. Let's turn our work and let's begin row number one. So we're now still setting it up to make it happen and what we're going to do is row number one is just chain three and that counts as a double crochet and then starting immediately in the next stitch you want to double crochet. So I need you to double crochet in each stitch going all the way across. This is row number one of the wicker section. This will not be repeated in the future. So this is just getting a setup for when we really start the wicker section which will be soon. So let's continue to do this. This is number one. So now I just double crocheted across. This is row number one. Let's turn our work and go row number two. Row number two is the start of the repeat. So every other row is nice and simple. It's just chain up one and one single crochet in each stitch going all the way across. So please do that. This is row number two. I'll be back in a moment and we'll really start the fun stuff in row number three in a moment. Coming across here in row number two, make sure you do go into that turning chain right into the chain work not to a space and turn your work and let's begin number three. And number three is going to be the overlays that create the stitch look. Let's begin that next. So rows two through five is the repeat. So we've already done two. That's just a single crochet. So in row number three you're just going to chain three. That's your first double and what you wanna do is you wanna come down to the second one way down here on this front post on this uh, double crochet post and make that a front post treble. So wrap the hook twice and come on down to the side and pull through. Pull through two, two and two and that counts as the stitch that it's sitting in front of. So then you're going to then double crochet the next one that's available. Once you have it established when you jump down you're just skipping the next one and just come on straight on down so it matches and you're doing a front post double crochet around that one. And so then you'll double crochet in the next one. So that counts as the one that's sitting in front of. So you go to the next one over. And I need you to do that all the way across please. And that's nice and simple and I'll be back in just a moment. So coming all the way across just been doing the alternation between the two stitches. You're going to have our double crochet in the final stitch. So it's just a matter of keeping count. So this is the end of row number three. So turn your work and we'll do number four and it's the same as what you already know is just chain one. This is on the back side of the project so the wrong side. So you're just chaining one and single crocheting yourself all the way back across. So please do this for row number four and I'll be back in just a moment and show you the final of this repeat. Coming up to the end of number four don't forget that turning chain is a stitch. So go right into the chain and then turn your work and let's do number five. Let's begin the next. To do number five the trebles are going to rest in between the other trebles that are there. So when we go to start number five you're going to chain up three and that will be your first double crochet and then you're going to double crochet immediately into the next one. So in number five here is that we just need to get ourselves so that we can start on the third stitch over. So coming on straight down do a front post treble. It's around the third one and that will pick that up and then you'll double crochet in the next. 
and that counts. Remember those ones that drop down count as a stitch that it's sitting in front of. So then you'll front post treble the next one. So you're working in between what you see below. And then double crocheting the ones in between those. So please do that away uh, all the way across. This is row number five. When you get all the way to the end of number five the last two stitches are just a double crochet and that keeps it in balance. So now what I need you to do is that I need you to repeat then rows number two through five over and over and over until the section uh, measures a total of 12 inches and you have to finish on row number five and five is the right side facing up and therefore I'm going to meet you there and we're going to do the final row before then going into the final section which is the puff stitch uh, section number two. So please uh, continue to do this wicker section until 12 inches is complete finishing on the fifth row and that's where I'm gonna pick you up in just a moment. So I got some homework to do while we wait. So please meet me here in a second and I'll do this off camera. So I've now just done the wicker section to 12 inches approximately 12 inches and I'm here on the right side. So I just finished the right side which is number five. To do the final row of this section you're just going to turn your work and just do one row of single crochet. So chain one and single crochet yourself all the way and then we're going to move along and we're going to revisit the puff stitch section uh, number two but before you get there just give me a chance to explain what we're going to do. So I just finished my wicker section so it's on ending on the wrong side so when I turn it the right side is facing up. Let's grab our instructions and let's see where we are and see what we need to do to go to the puff stitch section next. So here on the instructions what we need to do is that we need to start with the puff row section. So half double crochet in each of the next uh, 39, two half double crochets in the next and then one half double crochet in each. So we're going from 79 stitches back to 80 which will get us back to where we need to go. Once we have that done we're going to work rows number two through five as in the puff stitch, uh, stitch section again and you'll have an update uh, version here but you'll go from two all the way to five. So on the diagram we're revisiting what we already know. So we'll have our two through five. So what I'm doing right now is considered the setup row number one here. So when we move to this that we'll be working through that. So let's begin the puff stitch section and let's move along now. Puff stitch section number two. So let's begin. You're going to chain two, won't count and I need you to have double crochet starting in the very first one in the first 39 stitches and sorry that's a half double crochet so make sure that we actually do that. <laughs> Even I make mistakes as most of you know. So what we have here is that's one of 39 and then two and do all the way to 39 with me and I would, I'm just going to add that extra stitch in the middle of my swatch but that's what you need to do. So the first 39 is half double crochet and meet me back here in a second. Once you got your 39 done the next one will be two half double crochets into the next stitch. So that gives you back your extra stitch that you need for this and then just half double crochet yourself all the way back to the other side. So please do that and let's begin then going in the puff stitch section rows number two through five next. So I just finished up the first row and now we're gonna turn and then go back to that first page, page number two and it's the puff stitch section once again starting on row number two. So row number two is that half double crochet on the horizontal bar and because we are working on the on the wrong side right now we are, we're going to do the horizontal bar on the front on the, the side that we can see. So we're going to chain two and coming right down to the horizontal bar you're going to half double crochet yourself across. I like these ha um, horizontal bars. The ones that are doing the way I'm doing it right now are much easier than the ones that are doing it on the back side. But hey that's personal preference right? So please just horizontal bar half double crochet across and I'll see you on the other side in a moment. So I'm coming all the way to the last one horizontal bar and let's turn our work and begin row number three. It's exactly what we did before when we started this whole journey before and we're going to chain a total of two. So one and two does not count as a half double crochet. The first two in a row will be half double crochet each. So one and two and then you're only gonna skip one stitch because it's the starting up of a row. So skip one stitch and you're going to do the puff stitches that make that up and so you're just gonna wrap the hook, skip one, go over and pull through and then wrap the hook again and pull through and wrap the hook again and pull through. We've already done this before and then I need you to pull through everything and then chain two and then in the exact same one do it again. So wrap, 
and pull through. Give it a bit of slack, wrap and pull through and wrap and pull through. Three times is a charm. Then pull through everything and then move along. So it's now in the middle of the row. So you're going to skip three. So one, two, and three. Go to the fourth and do this all over again. So wrap and wrap and wrap. Pull through everything. Chain two. Same one again. So wrap and wrap and wrap and pull through and then jump over three and do the next one. Please do this all the way across. I'll meet you near to the end of the row in a moment. When you come all the way to the end, you got your two puffs that are in sharing the same. You'll skip the next one and then it's just one half double crochet into the remaining uh, two that are left. Okay. And now we're gonna turn our work and begin row number four. Row number four, you're going to chain two and then you're going to, that doesn't count as a stitch, so you're gonna have double crochet in every stitch and in the chain two spaces that are between the puffs, make sure that there's two single crochets in that space. So we have one and two and then continuing with the puff and then the puff and then the spaces next. So just move your fingers around if you don't see the spaces just to open that up for you. Please do that all the way across. This is row number four. So we're now ready to move on. This is the ending of the fourth row and now this is the final row before we proceed to the border. So you're looking at the right side facing up, all the textures facing you and so you'll chain two and you're going to do the horizontal bar on the back side. So just turn and just kind of get in there and again I would turn this sideways and crochet along the side edge like that. That's what I would do and that's what I'm doing right now. So go all the way across. This is the final row. Do not fasten off at the end of this row. I'll be right back in just a moment. And this will conclude the puff stitch section number two. We're now ready for the border. So I'm gonna give you some advice here. We're looking at the right side of the project and that's exactly where we're going to start. Now you're going to notice that we are going to be doing the horizontal bars on the back but I have to tell you that when we go in a continuous revolution it is so much easier than going back and forth doing that. So if you're thinking well that was kind of hard to do that it gets a lot easier and that's also referred to as the camel stitch. So now I'm gonna pick up and we're gonna do the border and I'm going to just uh, summation around my little swatch here and uh, we're going to begin that next. So let's do the first uh, part. So right where you're sitting I want you just to chain two. That won't count as anything and in the same stitch I need you to put in five half double crochets and that will get you to turn the corner. So one, two, three, whoops, try three again, three, four, and five. So when every time you have a border or sorry every time you have a corner you'll have five. Now you just have to equally space these stitches out. It's just a half double crochet all the way down. So if you start to seeing it pulling in that means that you're going too fast and if you start to see it ruffle then it means that you're going too slow. So what I want you to do is every now and then and when I say that just every few inches or so check to make sure that it's still gonna be flat for you and just continually just equally space going down. So on the edges you just wanna equally space and then the top and the bottom you're gonna have your stitch work that you started with uh, to be able to play with. So please equally space your half double crochets all the way around and put in five half double crochets in the corner and this will conclude the first one and then the rest of this blanket will then just come together so much easier. So I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. So let's pretend I've gone all the way around. I'm just doing a summation as I said. So I'm just coming all the way around and I'm just half double crocheting right until where I started. So when we do the next two uh, rounds we're no longer gonna be worrying about corners. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the first half double crochet. So now we're going to worry about uh, doing rows number two and three or rounds number two and three and those are the same instructions. So I will just demonstrate it once and once you see how it's done it's actually really quite easy. So the corners have a rounded edge because we're not gonna add any extra stitches for the corners. So to start just chain two and reach in behind and you will notice that the back um, of the stitch is a lot easier to get to. Okay so here is the regular stitch and so there is the, the bar in behind. 
So um, you see this particular concept on hats. So once you get the first bar then you just go for the next bar and that will cause this the top to lay over and so that will round it off. So you're just gonna play on the back bar and you're gonna do this for rounds two and three and then your story is over and so therefore it'll create a nice rounded edge for you. So please do that. This is the end of the, today's video and um, this uh, came in as a request for yarnspirations.com and then it was passed over to me if I wanted to do it and I said absolutely let's do it. So when you do it next time you'll just again lean it forward and get the, the back vertical bar and you'll notice that it will have a really nice texture to it. So this is it. This is the crochet texture sampler blanket on behalf of yarnspirations.com. Please enjoy and we hope that you've had a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.